in the middle of the interstate done. As I'm learning editing and this production stuff, I shouldn't give away what I, what I did, but my little parking in the middle of the interstate there, yep. Saved that recording and moved on to a new one. I'm not setting timers, so... This video of me driving around in a monster truck is going to have a lot of cutting together to do. However... Stop. <laughs> running for me now. <laughs> However, when I make the video, um, the processing takes about the same amount of time on YouTube. I use the YouTube editor. So the processing takes about the same time. My car is around here somewhere. Oh yeah, this is where I picked up the monster truck originally. That'd be a bad day for those guys. Yep, yep, that's a bad day. At least they're in the hospital though. Like, yeah, it's gonna work out for them. I wonder if I can go over that. I believe. Yep, I thought it was about the San Diego up there. Anyway, the processing on YouTube takes about the same amount of time, so just a, a couple more minutes snagging the clips I want and putting them together. If you guys haven't used the YouTube video editor, I highly recommend it. It's really easy. It does add a little bit of time, I guess. I mean, not really, because I just upload videos straight from... Um, the PlayStation to YouTube as private videos and then I put them together and a lot of people would do that on on computer first and then upload it to videos or upload to YouTube as one video it doesn't really matter to me I, I, I label them like this one I'll just pick a random number like 201 and then 202 I think this this one is gonna be in the seven or eight clips cut together so it'll be like 201, 202, 203. So just random labels. Spin it, I'm extra spinnings. Yeah. Didn't land as clean as I wanted. But yeah, when I cut them together, then after that video processes and I label it and make it what I need it to be, I'll go back and delete all the other ones off YouTube. And then I keep all the uh, original files currently on the PlayStation 4. It's quickly filling up my hard drive though, so I'm going to have to move them over to a flash drive at some point. But I'm telling you guys all this, so hey, you know, maybe you've thought about doing this and haven't, haven't uh, made the jump into doing it. It's pretty fun. You know, I, I do spend some time in editing, although a lot of these are essentially one-take videos. I did talk in earlier in the video about how I sometimes had to go back and recreate things and there's definitely some time spent there but I'm not I'm not messing with sound files uh, sometimes my voice is easy to hear and sometimes it's not as clear I'm just kind of leaving it as what it is I will say that uh, in the YouTube video editor turning the bass up makes my voice a lot easier to hear I imagine that would work for most guys. When's this video going to come out? I also read somewhere that you're not supposed to date your videos. You don't, you don't want to make them feel old, so I'm not going to put any like topical humor in them or anything. And plus, I typically stay away from most of that. A lot of topical humor is... Uh, is political based and I'm just not even going to get into that mess. Oh, I forgot to blow up the monster truck. That sucks. That was going to be a good little pop. <gasps> Let's hit this. Whee! Almost took a little off the top there. And now we're in a tight spot.
I bet you, if I get a bit of a run, I can climb over that. Um, earlier, when I was driving that monster truck, I said I thought I was going to San Diego it. Um, I don't know if you guys know what that reference is. Kind of a, a maybe a bad one to use, but whatever. Um, when I was a kid sometime, I don't even remember, I, I guess it would probably been in the, in the 90s, somebody stole a tank and drove through San Diego. They ended up high centered on a, uh, on a concrete barrier on the interstate. So every time I get high centered, I say I'm San Diegoing it. The ending to that was pretty rough. They uh, a cop got up on top of the tank opened the hatch to where the driver was and just shot down in there. I've seen much worse since, unfortunately. They show a lot of things they probably shouldn't on TV these days, real stuff, but as a, as a child, seeing that was, like, pretty gruesome. That guy has bricks. Thank you, fella. It allowed me to do this wonderful jump. I haven't driven the Banshee much, though. Oh, yeah. It's pretty fun. The more I drive it, it, uh... The turning is a little bit slow, but then it turns pretty sharp. is a decent drifter because it has enough steering angle to catch some slides. There's never any good planes here. <laughs> that one just became airborne. I always like picking up my cars with the cargo bob and taking them places, but that makes for some <laughs> ridiculously slow footage. And see, now I was in the city just a minute ago, and here I am. I'm just out in the desert. I can't, I can't help myself. Ow. There goes my hood. I don't know if it's still true, but for a long while, the, uh, the hood of a Dodge Viper was the most expensive body panel there was. I don't, I don't think it's true anymore, you know, when you look at people having to replace the wheels on their Veyrons for, uh, I can't remember what they were, like twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, something like that, and it was, these numbers are going to be way off, I can't remember right now, but, you know, we're talking every, uh, 10,000 miles or something, or maybe less than that, maybe 5,000 miles, I don't remember, maybe it was 2,000, it was something ridiculous. But basically, you can't just, you know, if you had a million dollars, you could, you could buy it, but basically you'd have to sit in the garage on, it's going to get me into my next subject. Which is, um, something not many people are going to agree with, and that would be, uh, high-end exotic cars you know even if you could buy the million dollar car because let's say you have you know 1.5 million you're gonna buy a decent house you know 500,000 gets you a pretty nice house garage and such and uh, especially around here where I live 500,000 wouldn't get you crap in some cities but um you know let's say you, you won the lottery it's or not much you won some money one and a half million, spend five hundred thousand on a house, and a million on a car, and you think, oh, this is awesome, I got this car and stuff. And the reality sets in pretty soon of the, all the basic stuff I'm not going to go into detail of. And you've driven the car some, and now all of a sudden you're, you you don't have any money, you can't afford a house, blah blah blah, all that all that detail stuff. And you can't sell the car. I mean, maybe you could sell it, but you might get a hundred thousand out of it. Well, that seems like a lot. A car that appreciates and goes up in value 
and cost you a million, and now you can only get 100, 200,000 out of it because you didn't spend the money on it that it needs. And I hear people all the time, you know, if I could afford a Ferrari, I'd drive it all the time. Uh, the thing is, if you could afford a Ferrari, you have to be able to afford more than that because let's say you get a rock chip in the wind in the windshield, which it happens. You can't just go to a normal place and get the windshield fixed. I mean, you're going to have to go to a Ferrari dealership. And even if you, let's say you don't have to, let's say you find a shop that will put a new windshield in, if you don't have that documentation that something was fixed from Ferrari, the car's not worth as much. You know, even, even a depreciated value is not, it's not worth as much. If maintenance has been done to the car and you don't have paperwork from either a, for the magic touch. you know, a, a Ferrari dealership or a, or a, you know, an authorized shop, it's, it's just flat out not going to be worth anything. Which it, it's hard to say because, you know, let's say like a, a Ferrari 308, I could get one for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. And in ten years it's gonna be worth ten thousand dollars. And you're looking at a car from the eighties and you're like, well that's a lot of money for a car from the eighties and a twenty thousand dollar car, right? But if you want a nice three oh eight with documentation and everything, you're gonna pay more than thirty, you're gonna pay forty, fifty, maybe sixty for a really, really, really nice one. You know, thirty to forty for a nice three oh eight is or a driver three oh eight is where you're at right now if you want like a perfect factory mint one that has never had anything replaced and that has ra rarely been driven that's a nice jump you're going to be up in the 60s but the thing is the one that cost 40 or more is always going to cost 40 or more and maybe even you know maybe even it will appreciate in time the one that cost 30 might need some maintenance might need some this and that stuff and it might always cost around 30 but it's not really ever going to go up. I say it's not ever going to go up, it probably will, but a lot slower than the car that cost 60 originally. And the only reason that car cost 60 originally is because when it did have to have something done, or, you know, if it had to have anything done, it was all done by a dealership, and there is paperwork that comes with the car to prove it. Now, I'm talking cars that were $60,000 originally when they were new. What about a car that was a million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars, and in the case of some cars, P1 GTR and such? What are those cars going to be worth to people if, you know, they only made a couple hundred of them and you have a bunch of aftermarket parts on yours? It's just, I mean, it's just... It's not going to be worth anything, and I, I've tried to tell people this before, and they don't, they don't care. You know, I just want to drive it and get the fun out of it and such. Very, 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 very few people buy those type of cars with with the intent of just driving them and getting use out of them. They're they're not that type of car. It's it it is an investment, even if the people who buy them don't want to admit it. You know, say it's just to pick up girls or whatever you can get the money back. Uh, a good example, uh, Jay Leno. He got his McLaren F1 when it was new. Uh, one of 64 road versions of the car. A little over 100 chassis total made. Some of them were for race cars. I thought there were... Uh, my memory's fading a little bit, but I want to I say there were... 995 GTRs, 996 GTRs, and 1097 GTRs, and those were the race versions. There were 64 F, uh, road F1s, 5 LMs, and 3 uh, long tail GTs that were uh, all the, the 3 GTs were big, were the last of the chassis, I think. Anyway, he has one of the 64 F1 cars. It, I don't know how much it cost him originally, but the prices I've seen were kind of all over the place. I've seen anywhere between four and six hundred thousand dollars, and that was back in you know ninety three through ninety five, whenever he bought his. He could probably get ten million for that now. Yeah, that's a that's a hell of an investment right there.
and he's driven his cars. You know, he's uh, he, he has actually has a video on YouTube where his mechanics and they are they are worth worthwhile mechanics. Um, they actually have the engine out. I can't remember what they were replacing. I know they replaced the gas tank being a, uh, a fuel cell type gas tank with a, a liner it has to be replaced every now and then the ethanol and everything in the fuel breaks it down I can't remember what else they were replacing I think they replaced the fuel pump as well would not be surprised if they were uh, working on the Vanos units anyone who knows anything about the uh, the straight sixes where a lot of the technology for the S70-2 BMW V12 came from knows that the uh, the Vanos units which change the cam timing on the front of the motor can make a really rocky grinding noise after a while I don't remember the uh, BMW motor I, I know the ones that had the problems were typically in the E36 chassis cars if I've gone above your head on car knowledge on it that's what I hope to do it will happen again. If I haven't gone above your head, you're an alright person. Rock. Oh wow, I moved that rock. That's cool. But yeah, back to my original point. Um, you know, I guess some people would still buy some of these cars if they had the money because they don't know the details of it nor care I went under that guy nor care about the resale value however if you're buying a Ferrari a Lamborghini a Pagani any of those very nice cars um, with the sole intention of just driving it till it's a piece of crap you're an idiot yeah because the alternative is driving it repairing it as it should be repaired and then selling it for more than you bought it for but hey that's just me in my opinion ah, I saw that tree coming This is going to end up being a rather long video, guys. I just am enjoying driving around chatting about cars. <laughs> While I'm thinking about cars... Plop. The uh, C5 Corvette 97 to, I think, 04. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure C5 came out in 05. Um, really decent deals on those things right now. There's like one online on, on Craigslist locally for... Oh, those guys are doing some hiking. I suck if a car ran one of them over. He was wearing white pants on a hike anyway. That's kind of stupid. Um, making them all dirty. <laughs> but uh come on yeah C5 Corvettes there's one that's for sale locally it's black black wheels has around 90,000 miles on it and the guy wants like 9 grand I'm like ah oh, that's really awesome oh while C5s do have their problems flip up headlights which yeah they kind of look cool in a retro 80s way but uh there are those um fixed headlight kits you can get for them which would be way 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 better but I mean they get around 30 miles to the gallon you know 350 horsepower and I can't remember the weight but they're fairly light especially considering modern cars are much heavier um you know for all intents and purposes it's a pretty good car and you know you can get it for less than 10 grand right now that's that's awesome and being an LS motor and the chassis that it is there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of aftermarket goodies and performance stuff you know, if you're not happy with that 350 horsepower, spend, let's say you get the car for 8500 bucks, and you can spend 4000 put the supercharger on it, you're under it for twelve five, and you've got 
a 500 horsepower Corvette. That's not a bad thing. Go along with that, there is a black uh, C5Z06. I think it's one of the first year 01, I think. Um, I can't remember. It's one of the 385 horsepower cars um, before they bumped it up to 405. Still, still not bad. Not bad at all. Still has its... <laughs> that was awesome, that guy went over me. Still has its original magnesium wheels and everything. Um, I'm getting around 100,000 miles. The guy wants 13.9 for it. I feel like Joe Dirt reading Auto Trader. But, um, yeah, that's. I'm looking for a, a, a Z06 for less than $14,000. And can it keep up with today's Z06? No. Is it still awesome? Crap, yeah, it is. I just paid more than that for a Mach 1 Mustang. Now, granted, it only has a little over 35,000 miles on it and has only seen the rain once in the last six years. Um,. But that's a different story entirely. I wanted a car that felt like a car from the 70s, but had all the modern amenities and reliability of a new car, handled better and all that stuff. Sold a uh, 77 Trans Am that I wanted since I was a kid. I always wanted that car, but the realities of the car were not what I wanted. Um, wow, dodge all those guys. The reality of it is, it's not a car you can just take out and drive if you want. Okay, you can, but you're gonna have you're gonna have problems. Um, one of the big problems being the uh, the sides of the car tuck in so much. I'm talking about the the second generation FY Trans Am that I had with 77. Um, you know, T-tops and all that. T-tops leak, so if you do get caught out, you're gonna get water inside the car, and that sucks. Sound deadening and everything under the carpet gets all wet. And, um, another issue. It, like I said, the body sides tuck way in, so you're throwing rocks up the side of the car, and that's not good. You have fender flares sticking out, and you know metal quarters that come all the way down to the bottom. And you're throwing rocks up your metal quarters, so you get back home, you have a rock chip you don't notice. You don't drive the car for a couple weeks, you come back out, and you have a rusty spot eating at your paint. That's it's just less than pleasant, and uh, you know. I'm sure the original paint stuck better, and if I had a much more expensive paint job, maybe it would have been better. Uh, um, 3M Star Shield would have would have you know completely eliminated that problem. That's a uh, a clear, very thick vinyl decal type setup where you can put it on your cars and it protects them from rock today? chips. Used in OE applications, I know the Lotus Elise has it on there. It works works very well. Um, but yeah, I wanted I wanted a car that would just start and run and not have issues and just work, but then also have, I just repaired this, then also have the bigger brakes and a little bit more sophisticated suspension, a little bit, please remind that, please remember what I'm saying a little bit, and just typically, you know, or not typically, but just drive like a new car, and then still have kind of that older feel, even down to some of the squeaks and rattles and the not quite perfect fit and finish and let me tell you what the uh, 99 Doe 4 Mustangs fit that bill to a T I mean, it's just perfect for me um, you know the GT is only 260 horse full bolt-ons you can only get them to about what is it like 260 uh, at the wheels so like 290 ish at the flywheel which it, it's not bad it's a, a 3200 pound car which is fairly light these days so, you know, 3,200 pounds and 300 horse-ish. Uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Now, you're not going to win a bunch of drag races. But I'm more into mountain roads and corner carving and such. So, 300 horse, 3,200 pounds. Can make for a fun ride. And seeing as how the chassis is based off of 1978 or 79 Fairmont, it's definitely got that 70s you know, feel to it, that old, old car feel. And my car, Mach 1, is uh, was originally graded at 305 horsepower. Generally, or I guess kind of uh, accepted that they were underrated a little bit. And then mine has had you know long tubes, full exhaust, intake spacer, a tune, and a short throw shifter. I want to think there's something else. I can't remember right now. 
which is kind of bad. I didn't do it though, the previous owner. The guy bought it from had that stuff put on. Haven't had it on the dyno, so this is all bench racing. But should be making, uh, let's say 320 to the wheels. Maybe 330. Fun car. Uh, I enjoy the fact that it rose to 7,000 RPM or, and uh, it's 5 speed manual. 6 speed would be fun. I really. I didn't like the 99 to 04 Mustangs for a long time. My wife has an 02 V6, and her, it's her baby. It sits in the garage. Uh, we retired it from daily driver duties right after it hit 100,000 miles. Oh, the sunlight in this game is pretty. Oh, it's hitting me. But yeah, so. You know, I didn't like those cars at first. I never really thought much about Mustangs, except for the older ones. Um, but yeah, after after driving her car, and it's, and it's just a V6, plenty package, automatic and everything, but it, it just felt light and it felt fun to drive, and it, it kind of reminded me of driving my, <coughs> driving my Trans Am, but didn't have any of the issues that I dealt with with the Trans Am. Man, they're freaking cheap, like right now. You can get a GT, and, and on the flip side of that, you can get a uh, uh, Z28 Camaro from the era. Yeah, they ended in 02, you know, or a Trans Am, Trans Am WS6. You can get a nice one for less than 10, and those aren't bad cars. The, uh, the LS1, the F-body cars, actually can get um, around 30 miles per gallon if you're cruising, say, about 60, 65 on the interstate. The Mustangs don't get that good of gas mileage, but, um, you know, I, I've had a Trans Am as well a 2001 WS6 and I just like the Mustangs better the Trans Am while faster and uh, it's more confident in the corners if you look at numbers and the reviews from the time and stuff pretty much it was kind of accepted that the Mustang actually handled better but it didn't feel like it and I would agree with those reviewers 100% um, Mustang has a little bit of roll and you can feel the rear end wiggle around a little bit you know, whereas the Trans Am has a torque arm and uh, <coughs> a panard rod and all that, a panard bar, whatever. I'm gonna ramp that car, that's cool. So while the, you know, the Trans Am feels a lot more planned, and, and, and I guess the Camaros do too, I've ridden in 4th uh, Gen Camaros, I don't, haven't driven them too much. Yeah, yeah, oh, I screwed that drift up right at the last. But yeah, like like I said, that's just that those cars are, are they're fun to drive. They're lightweight, and I guess what I was tr trying to get to there is, even though the uh, the Trans Ams and the, the Camaros of the time do pretty well performance-wise and get pretty good gas mileage, they're um, they're hard to see out of. Both of their interiors are just plastic, fantastic. Uh, just, it, yeah, neither of them are that great but yet yeah, you, you have kind of a, these big blind spots on the side so changing lanes is a little bit of a crapshoot and um, on the passenger side there's a hump in the floor for the catalytic converters of the f bodies and uh, not not a problem on short rides a lot of people don't even notice it but on longer rides the passenger kind of ends up sitting with one leg down and one leg kind of up on that hump a little bit uneven sitting and while it's a small thing it does becomes kind of an annoyance to a passenger. So yeah, for all those reasons, I kind of like the 99 Doe 4 Mustangs. They, those guys were doing a drug deal or something. They were up to no good. Whee. Ooh. I know how we're going to end this video. I've just been driving talking about cars. Exactly what I promised in the uh, in the intro video and my description for my page. Wow, I'm all over the place. I would drive around and talk about cars. Alright guys, hope you like, like the video. Hit that uh, like and subscribe button. Come back for more.